Excellent. So, um, the caravanners, Elizabeth von Arnhem. Um, first of all, who is Elizabeth von Arnhem? Elizabeth von Arnhem um, was an Australian who married Count von Arnhem in Prussia when she was really very young, 18 I think. It was a very early marriage and had three children. He died. She came back to Britain because she had lived in Britain for most of her life until she married. And later on she married Count Russell, brother of Bertrand Russell, the philosopher, and that was a disastrous marriage. It was absolutely appalling. I think she left him fairly quickly and didn't live anywhere near him for the rest of his life. And she died in America during the Second World War visiting one of her daughters. She was a prolific novelist, originally because she just wanted to write. Her first novel was called Elizabeth of the German Garden. And forever after, she was known as the author of Elizabeth of the German Garden, or Elizabeth of the German Garden. It was only in the 1980s when Virago began to republish her books that they called her Elizabeth von Arnhem, which was never her name. She only ever called herself Elizabeth, which was a fake name. Her own name was Mary Annette Beecham. She was a cousin of Catherine Mansfield, and when, Catherine Man when Elizabeth lived in Switzerland um, before and after the First World War, and Catherine Mansfield, after the First World War, moved to Switzerland to try and find a cure for her tuberculosis. And they had known each other as children, but I think Elizabeth was ten years older, but they became very close. Um, and then Catherine moved to Paris and then eventually died. And what is the book about, Caravanners? The Caravanners, here is my 1916 edition, a Macmillan hardback, is... A riot. It's just so funny. It's the funniest novel from the early 20th century I've ever read. I do believe it's funnier than P.G. Woodhouse. It's narrated by a Prussian baron who is Mr. Arrogance himself about a caravan holiday he and his second wife, a much younger woman called Edelgard, wished to take in England, in Kent, um, in a convoy of horse-drawn caravans with a group of English people. It will be delightful. It'll be country living. And naturally he expects everybody to do all the work for him. And he has flirtations, or so he thinks, with some of the married ladies and unmarried ladies in the, in the company. And to his astonishment, the party breaks up after a week, but he had paid for a month and he cannot understand why everybody else wants to leave, and, but he hasn't got his money's worth. It's seeing the action unfold through his outraged descriptions, which we can interpret perfectly clearly and understand what everybody else in the party is thinking, and also experience his explanations of his appalling behaviour. That's just what makes this book so, so funny. Um, and why is it so, so, so special to you? You've got your old copy there. Um. Because it's funny. <laughs> it's just so funny. I also personally really don't like caravan holidays. We had a lot of them when I was, a, I, I was young because we didn't have a lot of money and that was the best we could do. And I just don't like caravans. So to read a novel which also describes some of the drawbacks of caravan holidays, I do find very, very funny. And um, who will, what will appeal to the modern readers, do you think, about this book? Um, I think the wit, the sheer technical brilliance of how this novel is unfolded through the eyes of someone who's completely appalling. But you have to work to read and understand what's going on through his interpretation. That's just enjoyment. It's, un it's like a puzzle, unpacking a, a puzzle. Um, it's just fun reading an Edwardian holiday. You know, it's uh, about about everyday life. This is what people wore, did, expected. It's about social snobbery because the Baron gets very excited when he realises that the son of the Duke is about to arrive and he gets very outraged with a, a motorist who he thinks has cut him up and his caravan and shouts and is uh, generally appalling to this poor elderly motorist who turns out to be the Duke himself. And then he kowtows and is, is very apologetic but it's too too late we have seen right through him so it's about hypocrisy and snobbery arrogance it's about german british relations um it was published at a time when what scholars call the great war with germany was happening from 1880 to 1914 when an awful lot of popular fiction in britain was published which pushed the idea that the germans were terrible they were going to invade us they were a terrible dreadful race so it is part of that, that tradition.